video, I want to discuss what a radian is exactly. One radian is the distance it takes to travel a distance of r units along the circumference of a circle of radius r. Let's unpack that a bit and see what it means. Below, I have a circle with a radius of 1. We often call this a unit circle because it has a radius of 1 unit. On this unit circle, the radius is 1. And if we start at the point 1, 0 and travel along the circle, along the circumference, exactly 1 unit, then the point where we stop is an angle measure of 1 radian. So when the radius equals the distance traveled, that's one radian. So now we know what one radian is. The question is, how would we mark out two, three, four, five, and six radians on this same circle? Well, if we want to travel to two radians, we would want to start at the point that marked one radian and travel along that circle, that same circumference, another one unit. And when we travel one unit more, we would be at two radians. Now that's still going to be a distance of one unit away from the center, but the distance traveled is one unit more, and the total angle would be two radians. Let's go over to Desmos and see if we can mark out all of the radian measures that are in integers, up to six radians. Here we have this unit circle in Desmos. By the way, you can get this equation by graphing x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is a circle of radius 1. Now to mark out the first point on this circle, I graph the point cosine 1, sine 1. Because remember, r cosine theta comma r sine theta should give us any point x, y on a circle. If I want to see where two radians falls, I need to mark a point at cosine 2, sine 2. Likewise, if I want to see where 3 radians falls, I can mark a point at cosine 3, sine 3. Let's go back to our notes and mark those two in. We already had 2 radians marked, but let me put a dot there. And then 3 radians is right before you get to the axis. The axis value there is actually at 3.1415 radians, that is pi radians, right? Because when we travel along the top half of the unit circle, we get to pi radians when we hit 180 degrees. So 3 radians happens about here, a little above 3.14. Back to Desmos, let's plot 4 radians at cosine 4, sine 4, 5 radians at cosine 5, sine 5, and 6 radians at cosine 6, sine 6. Again, let's just go put those in our notes. 4 radians is a little bit past 225 degrees, or the 45 degree mark in the third quadrant. Five radians is a little bit beyond the 3 pi over 2 mark. And six radians is a bit before we get back to the x-axis. Because when we reach the x-axis, I would be at 2 pi radians, which is equivalent to about 6.28. Now let's take a look at a circle with radius 3. One radian is still the distance it takes to travel a distance of r units, or 3 units, along the circumference of a circle of radius 3. So here the circle has a radius of 3, and traveling from the x-axis at 3, 0 along the circumference, exactly 3 units, would bring us to a point that marks 1 radian in angle measure. This angle, this 1 radian, is exactly the same angle that it was on the unit circle. If we were to travel another 3 units from the point we just marked, along the circumference of the circle, we would end up at 2 radians. And if we travel another 3 units along that circumference, we would end up at 3 radians, which would be just before the x-axis at negative 3 comma 0. If we travel another 3 units, a little bit past the 5 pi over 4 mark, we would end up at 4 radians. 
passing the 3 pi over 2 mark and moving along, we would have 5 radians. And then before we get back to the x-axis, we would see 6 radians. These all correspond exactly to the angle measures we saw in the unit circle. You could also mark these out in Desmos. A circle of radius 3 has an equation of x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared, or 9. And to mark out the points on this circle of radius 3, we would need to mark out points at 3 cosine 1, 3 sine 1, then 3 cosine 2, 3 sine 2, then 3 cosine 3, 3 sine 3, 3 cosine 4, 3 sine 4, 3 cosine 5, 3 sine 5, and 3 cosine 6, 3 sine 6. Now one thing to make note of is that I'm marking out all of these points with Desmos set for radians. If you're not getting values that match my values, you might double check whether you're in radians or degrees and make sure that you are in radians. We do almost all of trigonometry in radians. Okay, so you try this one. On a circle with radius 5, what is the point on the circle at pi over 5 radians? Pause the video and see if you can guess. All right, on a circle with radius 5, a point on the circle at pi over 5 radians should be at left paren 5 cosine pi over 5 comma 5 sine pi over 5. Let's go to Desmos and see if this works out. So a circle with radius 5 would be x squared plus y squared equals 25, or 5 squared. We want to plot a point at 5 cosine pi over 5, comma, 5 sine pi over 5. I've got a point on the circle of radius 5, so, so far so good. And if I click on that point, I can see the decimal value of this, which is 4.045 comma 2.939, and those are rounded values. So even if we don't know quite what pi over 5 represents, we can guess it's probably somewhere in the realm between pi over 6 and pi over 3, so between 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And we know what point in terms of an xy coordinate we get from that. Now let's say we actually did want to know how many degrees a pi over 5 angle was. We just need a conversion factor to translate between degrees and radians or vice versa. So the angle corresponding to one full revolution of a circle traveling around one full circumference is 2 pi radians. Likewise, that same angle corresponding to one full circle is also equivalent to 360 degrees. So we can use a conversion of 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. Or if you want to just think about the top half of the circle, that would be pi radians, which corresponds to 180 degrees. And we can use that to convert between angles measured in radians or degrees. For example, if I want to convert 200 degrees to radians, I'm going to start with 200. And just to make this a little easier, I'm going to write DEG for degrees. So you can see how this conversion works. So I'm going to begin a little railroad track. It's a horizontal line with a vertical line to separate my unit conversions. I need to have degrees in the denominator and radians in the numerator so that the degrees cancel in the numerator and denominator. Now what's my conversion? It's 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. If I go ahead and multiply these, the degrees will cancel and I have 200 times 2 pi in the numerator, and I have 200 times 2 pi radians in the numerator. That's 400 pi radians, and that's divided by 360 in the denominator. Well, let's just simplify that a bit. The first thing we can do is just cut down the numerator and denominator by dividing both by 10. So that would be 40 pi radians over 36. And then both 40 and 36 are divisible by 4, so that would bring us to 10 pi radians 
over 9. And that's about as good as we can do. So our answer here is 10 pi over 9 radians. Now you try one. I'd like you to convert 5 pi over 12 to degrees. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. We have 5 pi over 12, which is currently in radians. So let's write that as 5 pi over 12. And I'm just going to put the radians part in the numerator. So 5 pi radians over 12. I'm going to make the start of that train tracks for conversion. So that's a vertical bar going down the after the 5 pi radians over 12. I need to put radians in the denominator and degrees in the numerator in order to get the proper cancellation of radians leaving me with degrees, which means I want the radian part of the conversion in the denominator. And this time, let's just use the more simplified form, pi radians equals 180 degrees. So I'm going to put pi radians in the denominator and 180 degrees in the numerator. Again, I'm writing out DEG just to make it seem a little bit more like conversions you've probably done with inches and feet or centimeters and meters or whatnot. The pi's also simplify to make a 1. If I multiply 5 times 180, I'll get 900 degrees in the numerator and 12 in the denominator. So let's do a little bit of simplifying there. That's the same thing as 450 degrees over 6 or 225 degrees over 3 or 225 divided by 3 would just be 75 degrees. So in this case, 5 pi over 12 in radians is equal to 75 degrees.